It is six o'clock and I would like to call the 10th regular council meeting to order. Would the clerk please read the quote of the day? Thank you, Mr. President. None of us is as smart as all of us. Would the clerk, clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Bellinger. Here. Alderperson Decker. Here. Alderperson Feldy. Here. Alderperson Heideman. Here. Alderperson Lefebvre. Here. Alderperson Mitchell. Here. Alderperson Perella. Here. Alderperson Peterson. Here. Alderperson Ramey. Here. Alderperson Rust. Is he excused? Yes. Thank you. Nine <laughs> present. Yes. Will you please call everyone, please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, we were looking for a motion to approve the minutes from the uh, last council meeting. Uh, Alder Perella. I move to approve the minutes from the ninth regular com common council meeting held on August 5th, 2024. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Chair votes aye. Those are approved. Um, the uh, the um, Board of Water Commissioners election will to be held on September 14th, or se September 16th, 2024, with a term beginning um, October 1st, 2024. Uh, anyone interested in running should contact myself or the city clerk's office. Um, also, next week, Monday, August 26th, immediately following the Finance and Personnel Committee meeting, there will be a Committee of the Whole meeting. Uh, let's see. Mayoral appointments, uh, city attorney. Still green, there we go. Uh, so to the members of the Common Council, pursuant to section 2-528 sub B of the Sheboygan Municipal Code relating to the Director of Information Technology, we being Mayor Sorensen and Administrator Bradley, hereby recommend that Matt Greenwood be appointed as the Director of Information Technology for the city of Sheboygan, effective July 22nd, 2024. And that will lay over. Uh, item six, uh, city clerk, is anyone for public forum? No one this evening. Thank you. I uh, go number seven, a consent, consent agenda, items eight through 18, uh, Alder Perella. I make a motion to receive and file all our OAs, receive all our C's and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Uh, this will be a roll call vote. You please. Oh, is there? I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I just wanted to draw attention to item number 12. This is the, the second time we've seen this report on exit interviews. Uh, this included all of the interviews that were conducted over quarter two. I highly suggest everybody take a look at it if anybody hasn't had the opportunity to yet. Uh, when I looked at it the first time, the one big trend there was is perhaps we had some opportunity for uh, providing more resources for training for supervisors. Was pleasantly surprised that when we talked about this in committee that already had been put in place based on the results of this survey. So I, again, will encourage everybody to take a look at it and I'm pretty happy to see that we've already seen action taken based on the feedback that we are receiving. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Uh, Alder Peterson. Yeah, thank you. I just had a question about item number nine. Um, and my question was, and I know that th this was kind of discussed at the finance uh, committee meeting, but um, I know that this is a, a memorandum between uh, these two entities. The $500,000 that's listed in there, is that the cap? I mean, I know that they've estimated that it's approximately $500,000 for this. Is that the cap or is it, could it potentially be more? Uh, Administrator Bradley. Yes, uh, this would be a cap 
so they would have to justify costs in those categories up to 500,000 is the maximum. And if you'll recall, that is the amount we budgeted in the project plan for TID 21. So essentially our participation would be the demolition of existing vacant buildings. Can I have a follow up? What, what would be the return on investment for the city then? Does the city regain this? Do they get the money back from property tax revenue or, or is this, a, there's no property taxes levied on this, is that correct? That is correct, and the buildings that they currently own, we do not receive property taxes on either. So it's basically elimination of vacant buildings, and then um, that's why we're not looking at using TID funds and participating in the reconstruction, because ultimately then we'd want to look at a payment in lieu of tax situation where they were making a payment, so we did have a return. Um, this is just looking at a way to participate in that nonprofit's project, um, because obviously them doubling in size would be a tremendous boon for the downtown area. So um, nominal investment on our part, and then I, know, I believe they're fundraising for the bulk of all the other funding. All right, any other discussion? All right, this will be a roll call vote. I'm sorry, uh, Alder Perella. Uh, 10 and 13, can I have a summary of what is that about, both of them? Mm -hmm. Attorney Adams. Just waiting for the mic okay. to oh. Yeah, so uh, both of these were for closure. Okay, both of these were foreclosure actions uh, in which the city was named as uh, a defendant because we also were owed money by uh, the primary uh, property owner. In one of the cases, uh, that is number 10, uh, that case ended up being uh, dismissed altogether, and so we're not out anything. In, in number 13, though, um, there, a foreclosure action was successfully obtained and uh, we will not be able to collect anything from uh, that particular property owner because our mortgage was, um, you know, subsequent to the first mortgage. Many thanks. Alrighty, is there any other discussion? Okay, this will be a roll call vote. <laughs> Alder Feldy? Aye. Alder Mitchell? Aye. Oh, there you go. I got it. <laughs> Nine eyes. All right. Thank you. That's approved. Those are all approved. Okay. Um, moving on. Here we go. RO number 47. 2425 by Director of Public Works Travis Peterson submitting a recommendation that Kevin Jump be appointed as City Engineer for the City of Sheboygan. Alter Perella. I make a motion to accept and file RO number 472425. Second. Okay, uh, any discussion on those? Uh, this will be our roll call. Alter Perella. I just want to comment that uh, I applaud the choice and add my personal congratulations. All right, any other discussion? Okay, this will be a roll call vote. Alder Feldy? Nine eyes. Okay, that is that is approved. Thank you. Congratulations, congratulations, Kevin. 
Alrighty, items 20, 20 and through 22 will be referred to committees. Uh, resolutions, number 23. Resolu resolution number 60, 24, 25, by Alder Persons Decker and Rust authorizing the appropriate city officials to ex execute a conflict waiver letter prepared by Quarles and Brady LLP regarding the representation of the city of Sheboygan and Advocate Health. Uh, Alder Perella. I ask to suspend the rules. Any objection? Uh, Alder Bellinger. Can I ask why we're suspending the rules on this? The, the rules are suspended as noted in the document because uh, the Quarles and Brady would like to get going on their um, representation of uh, Advocate Health, and so we're just sort of helping them out. Thank you. Okay. I just want to make sure that the public is aware of that. Thank you. Okay. All righty. Uh, go ahead, Alder Pro. I make a motion to adopt the resolution. Second. Motion made and seconded. Um, is there any other discussion on it? Okay, this will be a roll call vote. Oh, sorry. Did you vote? Is Who did the second on that one? I'm sorry. Peterson. Peterson, thank you. Alder Feldy? Aye. Can you just make a comment that that one is getting referred? Okay. Just make a comment that that one is. Okay. Nine eyes. Yeah. That is approved. Um, item number 22 will be referred to the license hearings of public safety. Uh, number 23. Uh, number 24 through 26 will be referred to committees. Uh, number 27. Sorry. Number 25 is oh, adopt. I'm sorry. Number 25, resolution number 59, 24, 25 by all the persons Decker and Ramey, authorizing the appropriate city officials to accept and expend funds received from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources as part of the Urban Forestry Inflation Reduction Act grant program. Uh, Alder Perella. Oh, ask. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Okay. I ask to, to suspend the rules. Uh, Alder Bellinger. Can I get a reason why we're spending Any rules for this item, please? Uh, this one is for a DNR requirement that we have to have a motion uh, by council to adopt this grant. So with the timeline of the grant acceptance from award, um, we don't have the time to run it through our normal process. Thank you. Okay, Alder Perella. Uh, yes, I just want to, to comment that I'm very pleased about this new grant for the reforestation and I look forward to learn how we will be using it. Thank you. Okay, uh, Alder Perella. And, uh, Back to you for the. Yes, I move that to adopt the resolution. Second. Motion to second, made and seconded. Uh, do we have any other cues? Alrighty, that is a roll, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. <laughs> that is approved. Thank you. Uh, number 28, uh, RC number 74, 24, 25 by Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 55, 24, 25 by older persons Mitchell and Perella authorizing the purchase of parcel number 59281501530 adjacent to North Commerce Street from Daniel R. Simorowski, Susan M. Simorowski, and Jonathan M. Simorowski for future use by the city. Uh, Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Chair. I move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Motion to meet, seconded. Any discussion on this? We have no. We're, we're on 28 now, is that correct? 
That's correct. Yes. Go back to 27. I missed 27. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, seeing no cues. Open up. We'll open up from Unicode. Alder Perella? Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Nine eyes. Okay, that is approved. Uh, we'll go back to number, number 20, item number 27, uh, my apologies. Uh, RC number 73, 24, 25 by Finance Personnel Committee, Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 59, 24, 25, 54, 24, 25 by Alder Person Mitchell and Perella authorizing the purchase of parcel number 59, Two eight one five zero one six five five adjacent to Pennsylvania Avenue from PBRK LLP for future use by the city. Uh, Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Chair. I move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Made and seconded. Uh, any dis any cues? Uh, Alder Perella. Thank you. Uh, so I understand the cost, I mean, the, the price, and but what does the, the verb, the language, removing the contingency for the Common Council approval found the line, blah, blah, blah? So these uh, documents were already sent to the property owners, uh, and one of the contingencies in the agreement is that council must approve. So rather than waiting to send these out until you approve them, they were sent with the contingency and by your approving today, you are removing that contingency and the sale can go forward. Thank you. Okay, any other, any other discussion? No more cues. Uh, this is roll call vote. Nine eyes. That is approved. Uh, item to number 29, RC number 802425 by Finance and Personal Committee, Committee to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 582425 by Alder Persons Mitchell and Perella, authorizing the sale of City of Sheboygan parcel number 59281701660 to Devin L. Hester. Uh, Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Chair. I move to receive the RC and Adopt the resolution. Second. All right. This is motion and second. Uh, any discussion? Seeing no cues, uh, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. That is approved. Item number 30. RC number 832425 by Public Works Committee to whom was referred resolution number 492425 by Old Person Stacker and Ramey authorizing entering into professional services agreement with RA Smith Incorporated for design and engineering services for upgrades to the Uptown Parklet at, on St. Clair Avenue. Uh, Alder Ramey. Thank you. I uh, move to receive the RC and file the resolution. Second. Motion made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? What? Sure, go ahead. Uh, let's see. Administrator Bradley. Uh, I just wanted to bring up one item. Uh, previously, council had passed a resolution directing me to come up with a proposal to make the parklet a year round. Um, by this being filed, essentially, we won't be doing that. So I just want to make sure council's aware of that. Okay, Alder Perella. Yes, so would you please um, be so kind just to summarize for us. I was a little confused about the, of course, the expenditures. Um, so the total, we get $50,000 of vibrant grant, vibrant spaces grant, 
that's great. And then uh, what is the expenditure from, the additional expenditure from the city? Is that 379? And then where does that come from? Again, please. Okay, so, well, uh, so the, the uh, DNR grant that we received for the parklet is completely independent of this design. So it was not written, the grant was not written for design, it was written for um, equipment and things like that. So um, that grant would have been in conjunction with turning it into year round. Um, essentially what we'll do now that council has filed this RO, we will look at making it a, a re, um, seasonal um, as it currently is. So just replacing some of the equipment. Um, we talked about potentially looking at um, like a music stage, a portable music stage that can be used at a couple different parks. Um, so items that can be used on a seasonal basis rather than permanent structure. So the, the bid that you received was looking at, um, that was for architecture and for engineering um, because there's a substantial amount of work that would need to be undertaken to make that into a year round um, place. Obviously taking the crown out of the road would be a significant undertaking and then addressing all the public infrastructure that's currently under the street. So that's why you're looking at um, such a high design cost. This was bid out publicly um, and we, these are the bids that we received back. So um, essentially looking at the proposed structure from the neighborhood um, group that was working on this, that's the cost that we had to come up with just design that is not construction. So there would have been more costs that we would have had to build into um, our future capital budgets. I have a follow up on that. Sure, go ahead. Um, isn't that a deviation from, from what the Common Council had actually decided that this project would be to implement a change on permanent basis? I mean, I do recall, if you ask me, I, I, I do recall that the Common Council approved a potential project for a permanent change, so much so that also the, the DPW uh, and the police department, if I recall correctly, chimed in positively as not, no negative impact as far as a permanent change. So how, how did that change? So the directive of the Common Council was to come back with a proposal to create it as a permanent change, permanent uh, parklet. So we took the design that the neighborhood group had come up with and we use that as the basis for doing the RFP and looking at ultimately what would be designed and constructed there. This was the design cost to come up with that, that permanent structure and permanent designing up the permanent closure of that street. So what we looked at tonight, what I was looking at tonight before the meeting was the permanent change of that area. The design for it, yes. The design for it. Yes. So then I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm confused. Okay, okay uh, Olerini, come hold on one second. There you go. Thank you. Um, in uh, the Department of Public Works, it was my understanding that we were not voting, when we voted to file this, it was to file this bid. We received only one bid. And so I made it very clear because I didn't want it to be, it, we're closing down the idea of making it permanent or not. How I understood that vote was that we were filing that bid and that it wasn't a dead, it wasn't dead in the water. There, we, there, there could be other things happening to make it a permanent thing. We were talking also in the Department of Public Works of what the plans are down the road for Fountain Park, et cetera, and not wanting to um, do any duplication. If there was gonna be something happening at Fountain Park, we wouldn't do the same thing at the parklet. But it was my understanding that it not, it's not dead in the water, that it wasn't voting down the idea of making it permanent. It was filing this one bid because it was an incredibly high bid. Um, to, for just the design work. So that was my understanding and I invite, yes, okay. my colleagues to chime so, in. Okay, hold on. 
Okay, go ahead. I'll yeah, and I, I was the one that made the motion to actually file this. And, and the, the reason for that specifically had to do with the fact that there was only, during the RFP process, there was only one bid. And uh, it just seemed exorbitant as far as the cost go, uh, went. I mean, I kind of went back and looked at the D-Land Park, and we talked about that, the D-Land Park and Marina bid. Uh, just the proposal for that um, design for that whole process is $240,000. And and the bid for this small little 60 by 40 foot uh, square area was $189,000. And so when you, when you price it out from a square footage standpoint, it was 25 cents per square foot for Dillon Park uh, for that proposal, for the design proposal. And it's $787 per square foot for the design only of the, the uh, parklet. And so um, I'm not necessarily opposed to continuing talking about doing a permanent um, structure there if that's what the city wants, but I felt when I made the motion that you know putting 187,000 or $189,000 on the line for a design only without any budget at all for, for building this parklet um, didn't really make any sense. And so it would be my, and the other issue was that this $50,000 grant, it, it expires at the end of the year. So if we were to table this, um, we have, the, this, this grant still can be used on that park that it has to be used at that, at that specific site, but it doesn't matter if it's used on the seasonal you know, parklet or if it's used on the permanent parklet. And so I felt when I made this motion that it made more sense to file this and let's deal with the $50,000 grant that we have. We can use that towards the seasonal uh, parklet for now. And then as, as time goes on and as uh, things evolve with respect to the Fountain Park design and the Dillon Park design, we can hopefully somehow maybe come up with some sort of alternative plan for this that could potentially be a permanent spot. Okay. Thank you. Alder Bellinger. Thank you. Um, before uh, the meeting that we had, the public works meeting, I met with um, Caitlin in the finance department to go over this. And I was told by her that it's not gonna be 189,000, it's gonna be closer to 230 to 250. And, um, you know, I found that to be in a rid ridiculous amount of money for, again, what Alderman Peterson said, you know, is a relatively small square footage of space. When you compare it to what's going on at Deland Park and the Marina Project and, you know, what we paid for, you know, for that consulting fee. So I thought it was extremely inflated. Plus, we do not know what's going to happen with Fountain Park. So I think there might be some things that we can do at Fountain Park that would incorporate the needs of what's going on at, at the parklet, and we don't know what that's gonna be yet or what, what's gonna transpire at Fountain Park, and to only have these things a block away, um, I just, I found it an incredible waste of, of money and resources, and um, I did get probably a half a dozen comments from constituents that felt the same way, and it's like, what are you guys doing? I mean, this is ridiculous. So um, we had the conversation, um, and, and, and the conversation was, we, we never discussed whether, during the meeting, whether this was going to be a year-round um, venue or a seasonal venue. It was just that we were gonna get rid of this, um, the, uh, this design RFP because, and file it because Number one, we only got one, one RFP back, and, um, and, and secondly, it was said that it could remain as is. You're not affecting anything with the parklet. The parklet would remain as is, and we could still use the $50,000 grant uh, for different equipment and things that, that would be used um, there. So that, that was kind of the discussion that was held at the Public Works Committee, and everybody was in agreement at that time to do that. All righty, I think everyone's kind of clear on what we have here now. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Alder Perella, one last bit. Thank you, <laughs> Chair. Um, it looks to me that we are mixing up a little bit of everything. So, uh, for example, the parklet could still be permanent 
just investing the 50,000. Um, it could be that we could postpone and uh, trying to get bids again, bids again later on. So it's, it seems to me, and also it confuses me a little bit that um, the Common Council, as I recall, again, I, I may recall it wrong, so I will need to check on that, but um, as I recall it, the Common Council had expressed a direction so if anything, I understand very well and I agree completely that the, the, the expenditure is higher than expected and therefore there would be a need to retry, but not to table the, 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 the project as the Common Council had directed towards um, because of that. So it seems to me a little bit convoluted the way that we are tabling a project just because, yes, there are burdens and there are roadblocks that we will need to address. So for that reason, I'm not uh, voting, approving that. Okay. All right. Administrator, Administrator Bradley. Thank you. Uh, so the bid, the bid included um, full design. So a little bit of a difference between what we're doing at DLAM Park in that area. So that's basically just conceptual. So they're gonna be, in this, in this instance, we're gonna be doing um, full design profile of the road, making that permanent. So, um, and then also um, they're looking at a structure that was gonna go on there that was proposed by um, the residents in the area. So um, at this point, what I would suggest, it sounds like there's still a appetite of making it year round is maybe putting this on to the Public Works Committee and having it vetted through there and then bringing it back. Um, obviously, um, the price of this option is not of interest, so we can take it back and discuss. Um, and we'll look at using the um, existing funding that has to be used up yet this year. We'll use that to buy um, and upgrade some of the um, park or parklet amenities there now. And then we'll okay. bring that obviously back through DPW committee as well. Good okay. alternative. Okay. Um, let's see, Alder, let's see who's Alder Bellinger's is next on the line here. I, I was just gonna make a point. Clarification that th this was this this vote or this motion to file is just the RFP and that we're not gonna go with this hundred and eighty nine thousand dollar RFP. This has nothing to do with the conceptual um, you know, whether we want it to be, you know, year round or we want to keep it or get rid of it, that, that was never discussed or part of it. It was just this RFP that we were getting rid of. Yeah. So that, that's all the, that it was in that public works meeting. Yeah, I would agree. That's just how we, we just really wanted to, we want to go back to the drawing board basically is what we said. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Alder Peterson, did you have another comment or? No, I was just going to say the same thing. I mean, we are not tabling the project we are just filing this bid. So, I mean, that's my understanding. If, if we have, as a city, want to continue talking about doing a permanent structure there, I see no problem with that. And I mean, I think we should continue to have that discussion. It's just that I think that the city deserves to have at least some competitive bids here so that we have a better understanding of, of you know, what we're getting ourselves into. Okay, thank you. Seeing no more cues. Uh, this is a roll call vote, or is this a voice so vote? Is a vote of yes oh. going to be to file? file. Oh, this is a voice vote, I guess. Okay, this is a voice vote. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Nay. So, one. That motion passes. All righty. Seeing as we have exhausted the agenda, all the Perella. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Hi. We are adjourned at, what's the time here? 6.34. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.